Welcome to Scaling Secrets. I'm here joined with a friend, Brock Laramie. Believe it or not, before we get into the conversation, I have known Brock for what, 20 years now? Yeah, quite some time, you know, grew up in the, the same town. Yeah, I was good friends with his older sister mm -hmm. in middle school. And now, as the universe would have it, Brock and I are living in the same mm -hmm. city area. We're both in the entrepreneurial community. And That's we right. We connected several years back because Brock was doing some really exciting stuff locally in the yeah. entrepreneurial community. So I wanted to dig into your brain, Brock. Sure. About what you've built locally with our local entrepreneurial community. Mm -hmm. Not only the community building aspect of it, but you've been able to put on consistent streams of events for young entrepreneurs. Yep. And what I want my audience to get out of this is to think about the local entrepreneurial community around you. Is mm -hmm. there a cohesive company, person, community that you can be a part of? And if there's not, mm -hmm. what can you do to start something like that? Yeah, first off, Jay, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, speaking, speaking of young entrepreneurs in general, you know, my, my story and the reason why we started Young Entrepreneurs of America was I didn't really know anyone like me. You know, like we grew up in South Florida. Um, when I moved to Tampa... I didn't really know anyone that was that interested in business that was kind of like my age. Um, you know, we all want to be somewhere bigger than we are. But, you know, for someone just getting started, you know, that community wasn't here for me. And I and I reached out to a lot of organizations. I joined Chamber of Commerce. I joined South Tampa Chamber of Commerce, all these different places. And I didn't really feel like they were a fit. So I just, you know, we started Young Entrepreneurs of America and uh, – it's it's caught here locally, and you know we're we're very mindful about how we grow and how we market and how we host events that are on brand to what we believe is important. And yeah, so we could touch yeah, really any of that. Wrong, but I think it's really important to state the importance of a community for entrepreneurs. Yeah. As you well well know, and a lot of our listeners know, as entrepreneurs, it becomes lonely down the road. Yeah. A lot of the people you're friends with in high school no longer have the same priorities as mm. you. They want to spend their weekends drinking, and they're typically stuck in a job where there's little or no growth. Yeah. Whereas entrepreneurs are hyper-focused on growth, hyper-focused on personal development, Yes. and just want to continue to evolve themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can become lonely the more that you evolve and the higher that you get. Yep. It's important to have a people like you and me in our network, mm -hmm. especially locally, yes. to be able to bounce ideas off of and just to relate to. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult. So, Brock, it sounds like you went through this journey yourself. You were looking yeah. for that community, didn't find it, you made one. Yeah. What were the steps involved in making a community of your own within our local Tampa Bay region? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question, Jay. Uh, what, what, the, what the steps are really locally is you just got to start somewhere. You know, our story was that we started, really, this is the story. I was, I was with one friend, and he said, hey, if you, you know, we were both kind of complaining that we didn't really know anyone like us, like, that we're interested in business, and this person's more in real estate. He does real estate syndication. And he said, hey, if, if you start a group to bring people together like us, I'll be your first member. And I go, okay, bet, let's do it. And, and that, was, that was that in our first meeting. Uh, really was just him and I at Fresh Kitchen on Kennedy in Tampa, and that was it. And uh, and then we started our we started doing private events. It was at a at a, a one of our mentors' house. She's in real estate and she's a kick butt real estate lady. And uh, she welcomed us in and she brought some of her friends and some of those friends are still around our group. And and uh, yeah, it was just six, so two to six, and then. You know, eventually you start catching some traction. We got our first big break was we started working with we started working with uh, Hillsborough County a little bit, uh, just doing some events, and that's how you get traction. You know, you catch a break, you catch you know a couple opportunities, and you really run with them, and you tell people about the opportunity that you got. And you know, every time you get a get an accolade or, or get a good break, you want to tell people about it. And, you know, be really public about it. That's good that we're here, you know, at your company because you know a lot about public relations. And when you get some exciting accolade, you know, that's half the battle. The second part of the battle is telling people you got the accolade. So right, the easiest product to sell is the one that you don't really have to sell. And yeah. people crave community. They want to be a part of something like this. They want to grow. And all you have to do 
in this case is you build it and they will come. Yeah. Now, I guess there's two aspects to what you do, if yeah. you think about it, right? There's the community aspect and then there's the event aspect. Yeah. Plus, and you, you, you don't necessarily need to, need to have both, but I think it's mm -hmm. helpful to have a place yeah. to bring everybody together. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the community aspect. What are the things that go into building that community? Right. Digital assets, yep. uh, places where people can talk and network. Yep. Uh, talk to me about the community. Yeah, so uh, how I look at what we do is essentially it's, it's two things. It, we, we bring in a lot of people to socialize, and then we educate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you educate and you socialize, and it just happens organically. Like – there are some things that you want to do to stimulate community. But when you bring in like-minded people, it happens. And they end up, you know, going out to coffee together or they end up calling each other or they end up uh, asking you to go to Top Golf and, you know, facilitate something for them. So the social stuff kind of happens. The the important thing is is getting the like-minded people in one room. Yes. That's beginning that's the hard part to start because right. you got to be really tactful and really strategic about where you find these people yes but if you can do it and we can talk about how to do it then you can bring in some really you can really create magic because i have people today that that thank us for bringing them together meeting some of their best friends people that they've never had the opportunity to feel so close with so fast i mean those are the things that we're doing so the entre entrepreneurial community is very broad, right? You've mm. got the really aspiring people who are trying to figure it out still. A lot of them freelancing. A lot of them might be getting into some sketchy stuff. Mm. And I guess you really need to be selective as the host of this community, as the right. organizer. So you mentioned it can be tough or difficult to figure out where to find these people, where to market to them, who to right. attract. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, so uh, I think you, you, you kind of talked about two things here. Number one is, is the filtration of how you keep the community good, and the other part is, is marketing to find these people, right? So, so basically they, they, they self – really they self-select themselves, right? So in a, in a real professional way, you could do applications. You can do things like this. But even the friction of just getting off your couch, getting off your butt, and just going to an event, that is a filter. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't do that, and – you know, I always had that little hesitation, that voice in the back of my head, like, hey, like, mm, you know, who, what type of people are we going to bring in just naturally? But when you really are public about what this group is and what this group is not, the right people come in. Like in all of our advertising and all of our marketing, this is, this is for someone that's looking to start their own business. This is for something, someone that already has their own business. This is not for someone – that is looking for a referral partner. This is not for, and then you go through the list. And then the people that end up coming, in our case, have been more great than, than not. Awesome. And what have yeah. you noticed, I guess, in organizing these events? Mm -hmm. uh, from my experience, as you know, going from a, a junior entrepreneur who's just starting out mm -hmm. to now, I've, I've built something that's a, a little bit more a little bit bigger right. and the people that I like to network with and mastermind with and go to conferences with are, are I like to keep them at a similar tier to where I am. A hundred percent. With the events that you're putting on and the people that you're attracting, have you noticed mm -hmm. that you're attracting a certain category of entrepreneur, a certain subtype? Yes. And so, so we advertise ourselves as budding, aspiring or full fledged entrepreneurs. So basically people that are, Maybe they're working for, like you said, maybe they're a freelancer now. They want to work for someone else or they want to work for themselves in the future. They want to have their own business, but they're kind of doing a little hybrid model. And and then there's obviously people that, are, you know, have drop shipping businesses and they're doing, you know, seven, eight figures in revenue. These are types of people that we have. So I think an important thing is to consider, you know, what segment you're serving. We service the segment that is that first part, right? So there is we, – we say Young Entrepreneurs of America is like the first thing that people can come into. And then there's also other things like just here locally in Tampa. I know you're building a community, right? So you're doing your thing. Um, there's also – when you get to those next levels, there's, there's Young Presidents Organization, which is YPO. There is a Tampa Bay 
Tampa CEO Council, right? There is Vistage. So these are all groups that are that next level. And so for us, the biggest thing is to know who we are and who we're not, you know, going kind of back into that. And, and we're not, you know, servicing people that already have 30 employees. We're not servicing people that are already 10 million in revenue. We're servicing the people that are just getting started. Or, or, or are started, but, you know, maybe they're not doing $10 million in revenue yet. And that's cool. And we get those as well, but uh, they become friends. We introduce them, you know. Yeah, I think it's really smart to be able to have people in a room with people who are where they are. Yeah. Or just a little bit yeah. up or down on the spectrum so that they can exactly. help and grow together. And yeah. then as you grow, there's always different groups and different events. Mm -hmm. Uh, that will attract those different stages. Like right now, I c see myself attending a lot more travel masterminds because mm -hmm. I don't really want to sit in a room and learn anymore. Uh, so that, I guess, changes a lot as you grow as an entrepreneur too. Yeah. Uh, the little, the more exclusive masterminds where you get around higher level people and the, the development there, the personal development, isn't necessarily what you learn from the speakers. Yeah. It's what you learn from the other entrepreneurs. Right. And the deals that you do with those entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah, I think the speakers, uh, they're an element of the equation, right? Yeah. The element is, is a little bit of education. But a principal reason why you bring in A-list speakers is to attract attention, yes. to promote, right? You're looking for those names so you can basically sell tickets or you can you know, really just get people to show up. The way to do that is you want to have A-listers, right? So, like, 100%. our buddy Vic that's doing his Rise Conference, which I have a ticket to, and Jay has a ticket to as well. He's got some A-listers, right? He calls them A-listers. He's got Grant Cardone, you know, Magic Johnson, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how you bring people – this is how you put butts in seats, you know? Like, the, the classic way to do it is is you got to have A-listers. You got to have people that, that people already know. So it, it goes back to, you know, who are you trying to serve? Who's your audience? Because in this case, entrepreneurs, you want to bring in A-list entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's really interesting, too. We were just talking about filters, like getting yeah. out of your bed is one. Yeah. Vic's specific example, he's charging, I think, $2,000 as his, like, middle normal ticket. Right. So that is a filter that yeah. excited me because now I know that yes. I'm going to be in a room with people who are willing to pay at least $2,000 to be in that room. So yes. The people that I'm, I'm surrounded with are going to be decent entrepreneurs yeah. at a decent level mm -hmm. or at least willing to invest mm. a lot of money into their, their own entrepreneurial journey, their own self-education. Yeah. But the A-listers is really what allows him, I think, to charge that kind of money. Yeah. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, you can do a little bit of both too, right? So, like, we can have in our community paid events mm -hmm. and we can have uh, premium events, like free events, things like that. And, uh, th yeah, same thing, you know, why I bought the ticket to go to Vic's thing is if I'm going to spend the same amount of time, like, it, it's, it's like it's a congregation of people that are badass, and it's like, all right, if I go talk to 50 people, there's a, there's a, a high probability that a few of them are really going to help change my life. And I look at that as a good use of my time, you know. That's good the right way to look at it. Yeah, good use of my money, you know, and – Especially if you if you don't have travel costs, like right, we're here. This is also a way to look at. This is this is a really what principal reason why I bought a ticket to to Vic's conference was. You got to think about what's the opportunity cost of living a whole nother year. In his case, he has events only once a year. What's the opportunity cost of living a whole 365 days without having that relationship that could change your life, without having that bit of information that you learned that that over you know compounded over that year so that's how that's a that's a really good way to look at it as well as you know what am i losing by not going forget what i'm gaining i'm going to live a whole another year a lower level of who i could be or surrounded by different friends than i could have had 100 percent. i think if you're not getting an roi from going to events like that you're not yeah. doing them right you need 100%. to show up ready to network ready yes. to put in the work and I know it can be, be tough for people to work up the courage and energy to go talk to a bunch of strangers in a room. But the right. in, a, in cases like Vic's event, the strangers in the room are probably going to be a lot of high-level local entrepreneurs willing mm -hmm. to invest in themselves. And they're there for the same reason that you are. Yeah, They want to meet people. Mm -hmm. They want to network. They want to further their business. Yep. It, and I think by not talking to them, 
you're not only doing yourself a disservice, you're you're doing them. Just, they want you to talk to them. Hundred percent. I mean, everyone's there for for a reason, right? Like, uh, you encouraged me to go to ClickFunnels last year. I went, and and a big reason why we have the traction we have is a lot of the elements that were discussed at ClickFunnels. Yeah. You know, like building your list, focusing on your focusing on your contacts, focusing on building relationship. These are things that I learned. Yeah. And and I've levered them over a year, right? So like when it comes to November, if I go again, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole year of, of a list that I've built, community that I've served, yeah, relationships that have gone deep, new business opportunities. So these are all things that can can come from uh, a good community. I agree with you. And I think it's really important for young entrepreneurs, newer entrepreneurs who are listening to this not just go to the events for the networking in the community, but I think as you're starting off and you don't have exposure, yeah. all of the different tools and tactics and strategies mm -hmm. and business models that are out there, yep. going to events like ClickFunnels, going to events like the ones you're throwing yep. are a great time to listen to the speakers, yeah. and hear what they have to say, hear what they're implementing in their business, mm -hmm. the strategies, the marketing tactics, the softwares. I wouldn't know half of the stuff that I know if it weren't for going to so many events and listening mm. to so many speakers. Yeah. Uh, now I get a little bit less value than I have back then because they're still really talking to newer entrepreneurs. True. And they're saying a lot of the same things that they've been saying that I've heard, you know, a hundred times, but maybe you haven't heard. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of value in yeah. in the speakers for young entrepreneurs. Go there, pay attention, bring a pen and paper, and you yeah. will get ROI for sure. Yeah, like I, there was this game back in the day. It was called uh, Age of Empires. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah, I have. Heard of it? So, so basically, this is how I describe entrepreneurship to people that are that are new. In the corner, there was this like when you just started. There was this map, mm -hmm. and it was completely black. And as you, because it was a map, as you went over different geographies, different parts of that map would show color, and so you can see the elevation. You could see that there was. A mountain there, you could see that that was sea or a lake, et cetera. And that's like entrepreneurship. And and the interesting thing about the 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 map is that as you see it, then it's not black anymore. Yeah. But when you start, it's fully black. So there's this map that you can't see, and you don't know what you don't know when you f start in business, right. right? So, but as you start to see different landscapes, as you get exposed at these events, as you hear about different business to business services that you can get, or you know anything really you know what merchant processor to use you know what ha what payroll company to use all these different questions that you might have get solved and so that's kind of my analogy there is like when you see it you can't unsee it so you got to get exposed to people you got to you got to be around people that have already been there done that you know and then life is a lot easier yeah i like that analogy I yeah mean, it's, it's funny hopefully when it's stuck you know it clicked <laughs> a little bit yeah, when you're new, everything looks kind of scary and exciting, and you want to yeah. adventure around the map and mm -hmm. see what's going on, see where other people are living, what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, once the map gets exposed and you kind of see it, I think it's easier to kind of stay in your lane, choose exactly. what's right, and you stop getting the starry-eyed syndrome, which is where you want to do everything and try everything. 100%. Because that doesn't work. And no. it's hard to really get to a point where you know that it doesn't work and to stick yeah. in your section of the map Yeah. Uh, but uh, before you've explored it. Yeah, you know, it's that it's I think I think a lot of good entrepreneurs have that have that ADHD, but they've they've uh, you know, shiny object syndrome, ADHD, yeah. that that thing that a lot of people struggle with including myself. But as you get more seasoned, you start to think about who do I serve best? Who am I most interested in serving? Yep. Where have I got the most traction? And then going from there and being really customer centric, you know, asking your existing customers as you've already had, you know, what can we do to serve you deeper? You know, what other ways would you like to do things or what other community events in this case would you like to see? These are things I'm asking today, mm -hmm. right? So I'm asking, hey, uh, aside from the things that we already do, how else would you like to build community? And people say, oh, we'd like to do a fishing trip together or we'd like to do, let's say, they want to do kind of like a round table and where they talk about their business problems and hopefully other people can answer some of those problems and come up with solutions, right? Kind of like what we were talking before, like you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of you kind of isolate problems and people answer them. So that's another event they're looking to have today 
our community members. Awesome. And it's funny, yeah. you get better at the fundamentals, like asking your audience what they actually want. Mm -hmm. That newer entrepreneurs just get too distracted to do. 100%. They know that they should do it, they just yeah. don't. Uh, and it's funny, I think one of the reasons we get so distracted is because entrepreneurs are very good at their jobs. Right. And as soon as you enter this world, you start getting hit with ads. You need to be doing YouTube ads. Right. You need to run an Amazon business. You need to run a Shopify business. Yeah. And we get convinced by all these entrepreneurs t showing us how much money they're making doing their right. thing. Like, I need to try that. I need to market like that. I need their yes. tool in this course. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because we're very good. But it's really important not to get sucked into all of the different things. Yeah. Yeah. And a hundred percent, Jay. And, and I think it's like, you know, an entrepreneur, we, we start out, we, we might have an idea mm -hmm. and then we go out and we, and we, uh, pursue that idea. Right. When I talk to some of my, my best buddies in, in entrepreneurship today, right. They do a lot of, if it's a startup, they do a lot of research and development. They do focus groups. They do things to make sure they're not going to miss. Yeah. And a good entrepreneur, um, doesn't really project what they think the market wants into the market. They they might have a, an inclination, they might think, but really they're going to come up with some MVP and kind of ideate and innovate into what the customers are or the prospects are telling them that they want. And the good thing about if you have some customers, if you have some, you know, people you're already serving, you could just ask. Yeah. You know. There's a Jeff Bezos story. It says uh he started to get smart, and he goes – he was selling books, and he was doing a lot of things in books, and, he's, and he, he just sent out a big email. And he goes, apart from the things that we're already selling you today, what else would you like to buy? And what he found was that people said anything that they needed at that time. It was like a curtain or a rug or a this or a that. And that's when he had this explosion. He was like, wow. We can we can sell anything doing this, so then he went one by one and you know introduced music and introduced these other things and that's really smart in a strategy to to know what has the highest interest and demand today and only introduce certain products and segments as your your customer base is telling that they that they want that right that's definitely a, a principle that every entrepreneur I think either needs to learn or will learn at some point it's that yeah. it's not about starting a bunch of different businesses to supplement mm. your income. It's about how to get the most yeah. out of your single business, out of your single client, yeah. and serve them in the most comprehensive way. Mm. And the longer that you are in business, the longer that you're building your empire, the better that you get at serving those people. And it's also yeah. really important not to serve them a ton of shit. 100%. And, and it's better to serve them one piece of steak than a ton of shit. 100%. 100%. And, Better and, feed them and five steaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's for so many reasons, right? Like the customer acquisition cost is, is your, your margins are better on the back end when you're selling more stuff to your existing base. You're going to make more money because you don't have as much of a, of a marketing cost, right? Yep. So if it costs X amount to get your first customer, when you sell that same customer another product, another service, or more of the same, right? Upsells, cross sells, things like this, then you're going to retain more of the margin right so i think that's important to think about that's just the financial end of it the personal end of it right which is the focus yeah. and making sure you're not diluting your energy right because if we have 10 things we're focusing on it's like you ever you ever um you know the magnifying glass you ever like burnt a hole in a leaf when you were younger and you kind of like sure. you had the sun you had the sun Frog at one point. yeah yeah exactly a bunch of stuff right it just starts burning. You're like, shit, and he hops away. <laughs> and so it's it's just like that, right? Entrepreneurial energy is like is like the sun, right? It's 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 a it's a it's a resource, it's an energy, concentration is an energy, and when you focus it on one thing, you can really make it burn. Mm -hmm. You can hit it hard. I like that analogy. Yeah, that's how it is, you know, because if you're not if you're not concentrated, you're diluted. And if you're diluted, you can't really, you know, make a real strong potion. There's a funny uh, visual representation. It's the circle. Yeah. One line coming from the circle. Yeah. And it's a really long line versus the circle with all little short lines coming from it. Yeah. And yeah, which gets you farther, focusing on the one line and building all of those short lines on top of the single entity, right. that single vision, or all the different distracted ones that get really short and then mm. Yeah, I've uh, seen that. That's a really good representation as well. Now, 
Yeah. Uh, one of the things I really wanted the audience for this episode to get out of yeah. here was kind of a roadmap, a recipe for start getting their local entrepreneurial community together in yeah. a way that's going to be sustainable and profitable for them. And I know we're both, uh, you've been in this a lot longer uh, than me. I, I've started something in the past right. couple weeks, Impact Social. I've got my business model for it. I've got a lot of my business acumen that I'm kind of uh, pouring into that uh, right. with the addition of resources. But I'd love to dive in and just kind of go back and forth with yeah. some of some practical advice for people, tools to use, things to think about, potential issues, how to market, how to profit. What are the right? What's the business model going to be? I do believe that in order to make this work, and I do think everybody can make this work wherever they are in the world. Yeah. It does need to generate some kind of money. You need to be oh, able for to sure, pay, for sure. Pay your team, right? But I don't think anyone's going into this for the money. I think they right. would go into it for improving their their business network and improving yeah. their social life. And yes, feeling more fulfilled. That's the only reason that I did it. I'm sure. Same mm. Yeah, that's why we started. You know, and uh, thanks for that question, Jay. Sure. So, so I'll dive in a little bit to it. And and first things first is is do you need it to be a profit center, right? So that's one thing to, to consider. Um, a lot of us have synergistic services that we can provide to communities, right? So things that, you know, when we're congregating a certain audience, in this case entrepreneurs, there's a lot of business-to-business -business services that they need. So maybe you have them. Maybe you have a suite of them. Yeah. Maybe you, that's what you do. And you're okay with uh, the community not being a direct profit center. Also, there's a lot of things that uh, these people need that you can be an affiliate for, you can be an advertiser for, right? So, I mean, when you look at just the basic communities out there, right, you, there's the Chambers of Commerce, there's the, there's the business journals, there's all these things that are already congregating entrepreneurs right. in their own way, right? But their principal source of revenue is advertising. Yeah. If you have an audience right? of 1,000 local entrepreneurs – that's mm -hmm. a lot of leverage with local it's advertising. Lot. It's a lot. These are people with money. I mean, these aren't a thousand teenagers. Yes. They're selling toys to. These are people that uh, have spending power. Yeah. So that's definitely one thing to think about. I think uh, affiliate and referral marketing. Yes. Is, is a big thing there, but also sponsors. Do you do any sponsors? Yeah. So we do sponsors. Uh, we have sponsors. You want to shoot for the biggest players you can get. But any business to business service is going to need to get in front of an entrepreneurial audience. And you can sell ads or, you know, your whole suite of advertising products, right? Maybe you have some display banners. Maybe you have e, e blasts. Maybe you have a combination of these things, right? Maybe you have a podcast. And on the back of the podcast, it's your principal sponsor. Yeah. So these are all things that can be sold, they, they can provide revenue. Advertising revenue is obviously high margin. You know, you're going to see mostly profits from this type of stuff. So, yeah, basically we talked about does it need to be a profit center is the one thing. If you sell something that's synergistic with this community, the entrepreneur community, then you maybe focus on that a little less. But answering your question, there's so many things, right? If they want to go on a trip, if they want to do really anything, these are all revenue streams. Right. Yes, organizing, masterminds. Organizing, events. mastermindings, and maybe you have offers, right? So if you congregate a big group, like let's say ClickFunnels, right? We know it's a community. They sell a service, but they also have their community. But when you're at ClickFunnels, you know day two or day three that you're going to be pitched on something, right? We look forward to it. We look forward to it. We <laughs> look forward to it. And and um, depending where you're at, yeah. right, that might be something you're really ready for. Yes. So – so uh, that's really good, right? And and that's your best audience is the people that you've communicated with, the people that you have trust with. Yes. These are the people that you have a relationship with. Yeah. And uh, relationships can be really profitable in a, in a million ways. In the social impact way. Yep. You know, you're just <laughs> you're happier. You got way better friends. These are things that are important. So to recap some of the ways to make profit from this community, from the events, yep. affiliate and referral marketing. So telling people, you know, who to sign up with, what to buy. Yes. Sponsors and advertisers. Mm -hmm. So businesses want to get in front of entrepreneurs. So you can do that in the form of banners at the events. You can do that in the form of email blasts, things like that. Yeah. 
Uh, you can sell tickets, whether that be to dinners, to trips, to masterminds, maybe even to conferences like Russell, yep. like Vic. Uh, maybe if you're able to recruit some A-list talent to come and speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are you know, all very good ways, I think, to mm -hmm. earn some revenue. One other thing that I'm going to be experimenting with are monthly memberships. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you're hosting recurring events on a pretty consistent basis and people want to be a part of those events, yep. like dinners, like little networking events, you know, wine stuff, cigar stuff, I think people will pay uh, a decent amount for those invitations. 100%, yeah. So we'll see how that works, but it's another option. Yes, definitely. You know, and, 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 and y like we said, that paywall is really important because you know it's like, look, if I spend 100 bucks a month, 500 bucks. Two thousand dollars a month, whatever it is, somebody else is paying that too, mm -hmm. and so you're gonna know. Look, if you only have two hours a week free because you're running a business, yep. and you only got two hours a week, you want it to be the best bang for your buck possible. Hundred percent. So in the case of masterminds, it's like, look, mm -hmm. if I if I pay a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month or whatever it is, but I know that that two hours that I have a week is gonna be a great use of my time, then it's worth it. It all just depends on how your business, big, big your business is, the type of people that they already have an audience, and and uh, yeah, so it's definitely. And I don't know if we talked a little bit about how to market these type of things. No, we want to touch get on that? that next. Okay. Absolutely. I also just want to add one thing before we do. Do it. Entrepreneurs are willing to spend a premium if they know that other entrepreneurs are also spending that premium mm. to be a part of ex uh, a certain exclusive group. Yes. For example, Brunson has like a one hundred thousand dollar tier per year. And people mm. will pay it not because the events are awesome. They'll pay it because they know all of the other people paying it are big hitters. Yes. That thing's going to pay for itself, ideally, through yeah. through their network. Yeah, and the important thing about this, too, is uh, once I was reading this book called Almost Alchemy by Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy is obviously a big mentor to this guy, Russell Brunson. The thing about a community, right, is there's there's the Pareto principle within it. And what that means to me is that Five, uh, twenty percent of the people are always down to spend, uh, five times more. Yeah. So let's say you have a thousand people in a room, right? And let's say you have some low cost model, free model. Well, it's about two hundred of them are down to pay some more. Yeah. And each of these levels, if they get what they were looking for and what they expected, then a percentage, in this case, twenty percent of them will be willing to transcend again. So what does that look like? So you have a thousand people, two hundred are down to spend five times more, mm -hmm. and then another twenty percent. So in this case, forty are down to spend five times more of what they were spending. Right. And it happens again. Right. So there's going to be eight people that are willing to spend five times more than what they were spending at the forty level. So this is important to think about, right? Because at each one of these levels, again, the margins are better. Yep. Because you already spent the money to get the customer to the first and second levels. And when you serve them deeper, you can make more money. They can make more money. They can meet someone more exclusive. Instead of spending the two hours with the 40 people, now you're spending the two hours with the eight people. Yep. And those eight, you know, have gone through that same filtration process. So community is really cool because you can add levels, right? There's the silver. There's the gold. There's the platinum. There's the diamond. And these are levels that you can add. I've never heard the Pareto principle used in reference to the tiers, and I like yeah. that a lot. It's that's true. It it's is true. Yeah. That's why you see all of these high-level entrepreneurs who have these groups and communities with all of these different tiers and levels and parts of the value ladder. Yeah. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Let's dive into the marketing. So sure. people need a business model. They need to be profitable. Yes. In order to keep it running, we cover different ways in which they can do that. Yes. Now how do they attract people into the community? Yeah, so uh, attracting is an interesting question, right? Yes. Because I think marketing and attraction can be similar, but when I think about attraction, I think about testimonials, I think about PR, you know, auto PR. Right, you I get the marketing, all right, yeah. now I see the ad, cool, why should I join? What yeah. kind of validation do you have for me to actually join this community? Right, so uh, to attract someone, you wanna lead first with some value. But to, to market to these types of people, we need to be thinking about really the whole Russell Brunson thing, which is, which is, uh, where is my dream customer already spending their time? Where are they already congregated? Mm. And 
we should come up with a list. But we can only make the list if we know who we're really trying to target, right? right? So are we trying to target people that have already had their own business? They're doing five hundred thousand in revenue, and they're you know between five hundred thousand two point five million in revenue. Well, these business to business lists, as you know, can be pulled from pretty much any data source, and that's a segment that could be someone's dream customer. Right. In a case like me, I know that I'm looking to really find someone that's started their own business at one time, got back in the professional world because they didn't get traction, or, or anything from that to really you know, a million in revenue. Things like that is what we're serving really mostly. So, and we call it out by saying young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Young entrepreneurs of America. That's what we do, right? So, really it's anyone that's 18 to 40. That's like what we're targeting. And probably they're doing less than 500000 in revenue. Maybe they have a history of opening up a business. So you really want to get that dialed in first. Yes. Who am I targeting to a, you know, you got it down to the detail. You got it down to how they think, who they are, their demography, all those things. Let's say you got that all right. Well, now the question becomes, where do they already spend their time? And in our case, right, I'm going to give you the playbook here. In our case, it's chambers of commerce. Mm. It's different social media influencers that they follow. You want to you wanna ask yourself, is this a local thing that I'm doing, or is this a national thing, or is this a global thing? That question's important because for us, we're really local focused. I want to talk local. Yeah, so we're local, right? So you want to think about all the things that are local, right? So maybe they're already at the SBDC. Maybe they're at the, the uh, Economic Development Center. Maybe they're at the Chambers of Commerce. Maybe they're already going to some networking groups that exist. Yeah. Maybe they're really plugged in on Meetup. Maybe they're really anywhere. So it first it starts with that dream customer. Then it goes to, you know, where is this person congregating? And then there should be a list. And when you have your list, right, these are the people that have already congregated your dream audience. Then what you do is you go into every media source that that person is publishing. Do they have an – let's start with the big stuff, right? Do they have an Instagram? Do they have a Facebook? Do they have a YouTube channel? Do they have a Facebook group? Facebook group's a big one. Yeah. Meetup. Is there a meetup? So you want to add a, all these things. Like I just, I just sent uh, – we're going to do some new direct mail to some of these groups that I've already had. No idea. Yeah. yeah, because we already congregated our, our, dream, our dream customer uh, list. Like who's already congregated them? And in our case, we're going to continue to market them, continue to market to them, continue to invite them to our events, continue to invite them to integrate our links into their calendars, right? It's like some integration marketing stuff. Interesting. Yeah, because they already have these email lists. They already have the data. They already have it. My job is to integrate what they've already congregated. Right. Right? So if they've already done the hard work, my job is to invite them play with us, you know, to, to get in on the action, to to serve their customer by, you know, putting us into their stuff. So I kind of said a lot there. Hopefully some of it stuck. Let's yeah, let's I'm down to dive in. Some yeah. I'll, I'll give you some strategies that I'm thinking of using. Sure. Uh, one of the big ones that you mentioned was partnerships, and I think that's awesome, especially locally. There's a lot. Of, there's a chamber of commerce, I think, in every city. I don't know for sure. Yeah. And their role, their job is to assist local business owners. Uh, so, yes, if you have a resource, if you have a community, if you have a seminar that serves local business owners, yeah. perfect opportunity. Mm. So what you should think about is what partners locally can I work with? Yes. I mean, Brock, you and me could be a potential partner for yeah. an event, for, for something. So bringing people in to your network to have these conversations uh, to get the most out of one another and help one another. Mm. Uh, and then you mentioned a couple other things, which is like email lists. Yeah. Huge. There's tons of B2B databases. You can search in your city. You can search new business. Mm. You can search for a specific size. If you're looking for one to 10 employees, yeah. now you have their personal number, you have their email, mm -hmm. and now you can do cold outreach to them, which is yeah. one, of, one of my specialties. If you ever need help doing that, you let me know. I definitely always need that. Running local ads, uh, huge. I was looking for search terms locally for like Tampa Entrepreneur Group, Tampa Entrepreneur Mastermind. There are a ton of them. People are looking for this stuff. So you want to be front of mind for them. You can run search ads. You can run retargeting ads on social media. Serve them with 
uh, some really cool stuff that you guys are doing, new events, and generate your list that way. Uh, I also think it's really important to have some kind of opt-in, some kind of tool, some kind of incentive for them to come on board. <coughs> right. Uh, so for you, for example, you throw these events, mm -hmm. you know, drop your email and I'll send you information on the event or give you free admission to an event. Yeah. That's a really good call to action. Yeah. And then I think social media locally is huge. 100%. People want to know what's going on around them. So if you've got a Tampa entrepreneurs or young, young entrepreneurs of, of Tampa Instagram page and you mm. say, I'm going to be posting updates, events, masterminds, yeah. get togethers on this page. People will follow. They want to know what's going on. And that's yeah. where people are spending a lot of their time. So I think leveraging that mm. specifically on Instagram and Facebook groups is a really powerful tactic. Right. So uh, we can talk about so many things there. So, so marketing, to say? I, I yeah. talk about all day. Me too. Um, I'm fascinated by marketing. It's my favorite subject. Also like referral marketing. One of the yeah. things that I'm doing with my new members is having them give me three, three email addresses for people they think might be a good fit. Right. And then they get the opt-in page too. Then they get to send three as well. So there's just, I mean, marketing is marketing. Mm. You can apply any principle, no matter if you're local, an agency, to what you're doing, cultivating a community. Yeah. There's a million ways to do it, but I mean, I guess if you had to pick your top three marketing, top, okay, let's pick your top three. What do you think the top three marketing strategies for cultivating a community of entrepreneurs is? Yeah, so the top three tactics, kind of top three tactics. Yeah. All right, so I would say, and if I just reverse engineer what we've done, you want to. I mean, Facebook groups is a big one, Huge, right? Yeah. Facebook groups is a big one because they've already raised their hand that they're interested in that subject. Mm -hmm. So you can add these people. You can connect with them. You can DM them. I prefer anything with a one-to-one. -one. Th this, is, this is hard to do at scale. you got to probably have more, more strategy and tactics involved. But, you know, you want to find the person that's interested, and then you want to reach out to them in some way, yep. whether it's email whether it's a DM, whether you're adding them as a friend, and keep them in your world, right? Like, you want to ask for the email. You want to ask for the – I mean, I ask everyone for their email, yep. right? You got to get the email. You got to build your list. You got to build your list. So and One good thing that you said is going to where they already raised their hand. Yeah. Local entrepreneurial Facebook groups are a good place. Yeah. I mean, if I were starting a young entrepreneurs group in Tampa, I would go to your Instagram page and yeah. – hit up all of the people who are following you it's really yeah. not that hard it's not and so we do that and we do it with yeah. chambers of commerce we do it with usf entrepreneurship we do it with perfect there's so many pages mm -hmm. that we in a way have siphoned traffic from and we also hire virtual assistants to to post every day in certain groups facebook groups oh, we cool. post every day every day we post something and Maybe you don't get the email the first time, but you added them as a friend. Yeah. And then they get pinged from Facebook that, oh, this guy posted in this group again. And so before you know it, you're omnipresent, right? If you add value, that's the biggest thing, right? You try to add value. You don't have to get crazy about it. Just do the best thing that you think at the time to add some value to some entrepreneurs. Maybe a tip here. Maybe, hey, I saw this video. It was amazing. And share these things in places where they already congregate, right? And really, just it just goes down to you got that that Dream 100 thing we talked about before, knowing your list, knowing what media each one of them has congregated the most people on. So it's like, you know, if they ha if they're big on YouTube, if they're big on Instagram, if they're big on Facebook groups, if they're big wherever they are, you might go in there and you might add those people. You might you know really just DM those people or whatever. I mean, you can get s you can get hundreds of people just like that. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And then when you get the ball rolling on some some direct stuff like that, you can ask your people about three referrals or, hey, you've been to a couple of our events now. Tell me, you got any friends that would be interested in what we do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, I got like one or two. Great. Can you introduce us right now in a, in a group chat or can you, you know, send them our stuff right now or can you send me their email with their permission that that's okay? So you got to get the ball rolling. So let's go back to the three things, right? First thing, let's get into all the, the big things, the Instagram, the Facebook. Let's follow the people that they also follow. You know, do some, do some research, look at their bio, make sure they're actually interested in business, stuff like this, yeah. and reach out. That's a big way. 
Another big way is obviously referrals, things like that. And I would say the other huge one is is really just finding partners, right? Like yes. for us, it's we do some stuff with a with out of a facility that's a government facility, and uh, we do free events there. That's we do all free events at that facility. So they have their own list, has thousands on that list. That's huge. And we've integrated into their calendar. So this is something we need to think about, right? Mm-hmm. Who's already got the list? Who's already got the list? And you want to create your own list, right? This isn't black or white. It's not one or the other. It's all of these things. Yes. You do all of them, right? There's a, Dan, there's a Dan Kennedy quote that I think is really important, and it's about this dentist or this chiropractor. And uh, this guy, he builds a chiropractic practice, and he sells it, and he makes some millions, and he builds another chiropractor practice and he sells it and he makes a few more million and he does it again and again and again and he has this buddy that comes up to him and he says hey what's like the one thing you do to like grow your company so much and he's like one thing he's and they're like yeah like the one thing like how do you get so many customers so fast and he's like look i know 72 things that will get me one customer and i do all 72 (laughs) And I think this is so important, right? Because it's not one thing. It's not just Facebook groups. It's not just Instagram. It's all of these things. And the cumulative effect is very powerful. You have to do them all. Man, I agree with you. Yeah. uh, And it's tough to do them all. And it's tough to be good at all of them. And that's where this entrepreneurial journey leads, right? Right. You start with one thing. You add another thing. You add another thing. Before you know it, you're you're a very dangerous man. You're a very dangerous entrepreneur. So I encourage, uh, and the reason I wanted to have you here was to encourage other people right. in their various cities, not our city, because we got this shit on. Yeah, we, we got it. We got to figure it out here. <laughs> but in your cities, is there an, a community right now of entrepreneurs where they're meeting in person, where they yeah. can talk and network and build each other up? If there's not, you have an opportunity right now to build something, mm. to bring everybody together. And there's probably never been an easier business for you to start that's more fulfilling, more profitable if you do things right, and more impactful for your yeah. local community. It's so impactful. So my 100%. call to action for the listeners is to go ahead and do it. Barack, where can people sign up with you for your organization? Where can people connect with you? The yeah, thanks, Jay, for the uh, opportunity. So they can go to our Instagram page is what we're really driving traffic to right now, oh, yeah. which is YEA Entrepreneur. That's at YEA, stands for Young Entrepreneurs of America Entrepreneur. You can go there. You get all of our news, updates, and surprises and gifts sometimes. We do things. Like we just posted some amazing event that we have coming up with a uh, billion-dollar brand builder, another one. But, uh, yeah, so they can go to our Instagram page. What do you have coming up? What's the event? Who's the speaker? Yeah, so uh, we just we just got invited to uh, a luncheon where it's going to be the CEO of City Furniture. And uh, Business Journal reports that they're doing seven hundred and sixty-eight point or seven hundred sixty-three point eight million dollars in revenue a year. So, and I've met Andrew; he's a really nice guy. So, I'm I'm super excited about that. So, they're gonna have some seats for us over at the Tampa Club in uh, downtown Tampa. So, we'll get to spend some time with him, and and uh, they might uh, give us a, a, a walkthrough of their new plant. They're doing; they built a new uh, like a million dollar square foot facility in Plant City and we might get a we might get a thing going on over there yeah, super cool looking yeah. forward to everything that you're doing and being yeah. a part of it and thank you for uh, joining me today this has been awesome yeah thank you Jay